Well, we want to go back to that story about the alarming rate of dengue fever in the Americas. For more on that, we're joined by Dr. Calvin Sun. He is attending physician and clinical assistant professor in emergency medicine. Doctor, thank you so much for joining our program today. Sure. Well, Doctor, uh, the cases of dengue fever have reached unprecedented levels. Uh, why is it so bad this year as opposed to year in years past? And why have cases uh, seemed to have emerged earlier in the year than normal? Climate change. Dengue, dengue fever is a seasonal a disease that happens in a certain part of the world where mosquitoes have think somewhere close to the equator. And it's usually February to May, June, and we're in March right now. So dengue fever usually spikes around this time. It's particularly bad because of climate change and how the weather patterns are much more intense. And as probably you probably have heard in many other news stories, how heat waves are getting hotter, cold snaps are getting colder, the extremes are getting more extremes, and all the things that come with the extremes, such as disease and the things that carry them, like mosquitoes and where they breed. They love humidity, and wherever you are where there's a lot of mosquitoes, namely the tropics, the Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, you're going to see an increase in mosquito prevalence and therefore dengue spread. Doctor, can you give us a sense of what health officials are doing now to try to clamp down on this um, in these affected countries? What steps are they taking to try to get this outbreak under control? And my second part of this question is, uh, is the health infrastructure in these countries able to, to handle this kind of outbreak? It depends on which country the health infrastructures you're speaking about. There's some more developed countries that are better able to do prevention, and there are other countries that are going to focus more on supportive care. You can't control nature. We can't fix climate change overnight. So, the, so that, that would be the best. The second least, controlling mosquitoes. So unless we invent a CRISPR gene that gets rid of all mosquitoes, you can't fight that. So the best thing is prevention, preventing yourself from getting bit by a mosquito that carry dengue. So a good mosquito repellents, uh, avoiding uh, covering your exposed skin areas. Don't get dengue in the first place. Uh, dengue is also more severe if you get it a second time because of the antibody response when you get it the first time. So best you just don't get bit at all. Nobody likes to get bit by a mosquito, so that's not very hard advice to sell on. So a lot of countries are trying to do that if they can, because if you prevent, then you don't even need a patient to come into an emergency room or hospital to overwhelm them. But there is no cure for dengue. There is a vaccine that's been around since 1920s, so you can get vaccinated, especially if you're above the age of nine. It's very safe and prevent yourself from getting the severe illness of dengue. But once you do get dengue, to care, treat symptomatically. There's no cure for it. So lots of fluids and IV fluids that we could likely want to save for people to actually need them if they didn't get dengue in the first place. So a lot of countries are doing these things depending on the resources they have as well as the, um, the relative prevalence. But the best is prevention. According to the World Health Organization, uh, they're saying about half of the world's population is now at risk of the disease. Um, are countries that have not experienced the outbreak right now, could they be at serious risk too? No, I'm not worried about dengue. I live, this is New York City. It's 60 degrees Fahrenheit outside. We just had a couple of 30 degrees Fahrenheit the last couple of days. There are no mosquitoes where I am in New York City. Nobody's talking about dengue in New York City because we're not in the tropics. There's no dengue season in New York City or most of continental America. So dengue is not really on our mind unless you travel from there and you're flying into the airport and you have high fever and bone, you know, myalgias and bone breaking fever. Then we start thinking of that. And then we send you to the right hospital that has really good supportive care. But a lot of them go home even. If they look great, they're not toxic. You can manage dengue at home without the need for medicine as long as you're, you know, taking fluid and taking antipyretics like Tylenol, Advil, Paracetamol, Ibuprofen, you're going to be fine. But to be honest, in New York City, we're not talking about it because dengue is not prevalent here. It's really, unfortunately, in places where there's a lot of mosquitoes, the tropics, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, they're really, really feeling the brunt of it. And it's because we have an extreme of climate that causes an increase of mosquitoes to spread dengue. Dr. Calvin Sun, thank you so much for joining our program and your expertise.